Okay, well we've got our steel prepped for the uh, for the roll-up door jams, and you'll notice we put uh, we've got cheek plates here that we welded on, and those are just to uh, attach to the door header. So the door header actually rests uh, on the top of the column, and then the cheek plates um, create a mechanical connection. And on the back side, we got quarter-inch holes, and those correspond with half-inch holes out front here on the opposite side. And this is how we're doing the attachment um, to the uh, to the existing jam. And you just go in with a ridiculously long uh, tech screw bit and uh, run in there and go down and drive a screw in through the uh, quarter inch hole on the opposite side. <clears throat> I'll show you after they get put in. And then we welded a, we made like a little telescoping uh, floor plate. Um, so then we put them in place temporarily and, uh, and kind of jacked them up and put those, welded those floor plates in. So we've got a mechanical attachment to the floor. All right, but that's the two, uh, two, those are two by six rectangular tubing, and that gives me a place to attach my uh, uh, roll up doors. And you see here we've got the, this is all pinned in and bolted now. We've got all our uh, bolting done, and everything's plumb. And we cut back the uh, that floor channel, and so my uh, new columns go in right there, and uh, six inches per side, so the doorway. <clears throat> is shortening by uh, a foot and then those cheek plates tie in up right up there to the top and get attached up there and then the uh, those screws I was telling you about are gonna we go through the column and tech screw into that to create an attachment and then they'll all get caulked and we're done caulked and painted all right so that's uh, that's what's next before roll-up doors. They're a beautiful shade of red oxide primer and I think they're gonna go flat black. Okay, so we've attached our uh, two by six rectangular and we did it through these um, large holes on this side. And over directly opposite, we got a quarter inch hole for clearance and just put a tech screw in there using a ridiculously long drill uh, driver bit that barely fits in this hole. But then you can fish around, find the hole, and send it on through. And when you're done, you just cover it with a simple plastic cap. As so, blends in nice, done deal. So all those holes are going to get plugged up with the plastic caps, and uh, jam's finished. Okay, all the plugs are in. It kind of match, you know, looks good. So now we're ready for roll-up doors. That's next. Uh, that bright's gonna blow you out. I do need to get some floor anchors down there. I got some angle plates welded to the bottom, so I gotta get a, some floor anchors in there. No big deal. But uh, I think they could still hang the roll-up door. But we're ready for them. What could be in the box? Ooh, could it be a roll-up door? Might be a roll-up door. Okay, so we uh, got the roll-up door put in uh, yesterday. We had, uh, actually, I uh, had the company put it in because if you don't have them install it, you don't get a warranty. And this thing's got a five-year warranty. And I'll tell you what they gave me, which was kind of nice. Uh, it's garage door type openers. But uh, I got two of these. I used the overhead door company. They, uh, they, they do the uh, overhead doors on the spray boost for me. And uh, it's just a matter of that. And we've got an electric uh, roll-up door. And 
And you can see my black trimmers kind of match all the other hardware on the roll-up door. And it's a pretty slick door, you know. It's uh, It's got a nice look, I think. I picked gray. I could have picked white or gray. I like the monochrome, so the gray, the black, and the white look pretty good together. Uh, it's got a door seal on the bottom, like a rubber inner tube type bump seal. And it's got the flap seals up the side. And across the top, it's got a brush seal. So pretty neat. And I'll take you inside and show you the mechanism and what I'm going to have to deal with. It was a tight squeeze getting this thing in here. Okay, so there it is all the way up. That gives me a 10-1 high by 11-1 wide opening. And here's the flap seals that are on it. Just kind of a flapper seal. And up top in that cavity, I don't know if you can even see it up there. There's a there's a like a brush. It looks almost like a broom that goes all the way across. They call it a brush seal. Keeps insects from coming in and keeps uh, it keeps it the draft down and it'll keep dust and dirt from coming in. But there's the mechanicals of the of the thing, which was a very tight squeeze. And actually, the emergency chain, which this doesn't this is this isn't doing anything. This is just sitting idle but this is uh if you've got a power outage you pull that little red cord up there and uh then operate the chain and you can still get the door open even if you got power out so this is going to store in the attic this gets skins if you remember so that part of the mechanism will actually be in the attic so we couldn't get it any tighter that's just she's pretty snug there and pretty snug over here So that's my uh, roll-up door, and then we've got a, they, they gave me a push-button station here, so I've got a way to open and close right here. And I'm going to show you that bump stop on the bottom. It's actually pretty interesting. We're going to hit close. We're going to go ahead and bring the door down, but the door is auto-reversing. I just smacked that with my hand. It's got like a, uh, like I said, it's got like an inner tube in there. And it's, uh, it goes to a puff switch. And up in that little electrical box, I don't even know that you can see it. I'll bring it down a little bit again. Inside of this box here uh, is a puff switch. This isn't a, a wire. This is actually a uh, air hose. And when this gets impacted, it puts a puff of air to this switch, the switch closes, and then this on this side is a, like a microphone cord, and that, this is electrical. So inside of this is a puff switch, and air to electric, there's two wires, and it tells the operator to stop, and then there's a slight delay, and then, it's, then it auto-reverses. But uh, the, I don't know whether, I can't activate it unless it's in motion. There it is. So if it comes down on a car, or you leave something in the doorway, you got a piece of pipe laying across the doorway and it hits it, it'll auto reverse and won't damage the door. So pretty cool. And that was uh, required to have wireless remotes because the door is not always in sight. So that's another part of phase two complete. Those doors put in and they were nice enough to give me a couple of, uh, they gave me a keychain fob that one will open and close it too. Overhead door company. Kind of nice. So we got that. And then we got the big ones that go in the trucks up on the visors. And so I got three ways to open it. Actually four, including the push buttons over there. So I got four ways to open and close the door. Uh, kind of nice. Anyways, uh, I picked a commercial grade door. I didn't want a uh, residential grade. So roll-up door done, and I'm moving along. I'm super happy with that. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about is what's in the back of my truck over there. Uh, that's a phase converter. Okay, so we got our big box here in the back of the truck. Here's your 100 amp disconnect switch. That's a three-pole, actually. 
which I only, you don't have to use all three, you can use uh, two out of three. But uh, there's an outdoor disconnect, so that can sit right next to the phase converter so we can safely work on it. I've got a, uh, got a load center here and a bunch of accessories. These are probably all the, these are probably filled up with breakers, neutral bar kits, grounding kits, blah, 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 everything to make it complete. And American Rotary can take care of that too. Uh, you know, if, they, if you've got other equipment, transformers, load centers, disconnects, switch gear, whatever, if you've got, you know, big stuff to order with your phase converter, they can help you accessorize. And they were an awful lot of help when it came to that. So uh, let's get this unboxed and have a peek at our new panel. Okay, well they sent quite a few items here. Uh, they, I've got, there's a grounding kit there for the panel. So there's a couple of ground lugs to, I guess, to hook up to the ground bar. I got some three pole breakers. I got a 20 and a 30. Now this is to run the Monarch here. And then there's another just general purpose 20 amp. But I can add more later. I got plenty of spaces in there. I got a bunch of two poles. Uh, there's a there's a couple of 40s, uh, one's, one's for the air compressor, I don't remember what that, oh, that one's for the small welder, I got some 20 amp uh, doubles, those are for the VFDs in the shop, the milling machine and the, and the uh, uh, Logan, uh, 30 amps double, I forgot what that's for, <laughs> that's probably for the other, oh, that's for the, my plasma cutter. The 60 amp is for the big TIG welder, and the 30 was just a spare. And then I got a bunch of singles here. This is all for lighting. I, I, in the shop I, right now, I have two lighting circuits. I'll be adding a third, so that takes care of those three. And then that leaves me four for general purpose circuits in the shop. Right now, I have uh, uh, two circuits for wall outlets, and I'll be adding two more with the shop extension. So, you know, and those are, these are the square D standard garden variety uh q q o q yeah they're the q o line so uh pretty easy to find these you know it's not like they're you know, we're not building a white elephant here so we can find these breakers anywhere all right so uh, it's cheaper to actually buy your breakers already you know with the panel make sure you accessorize your panel completely when you buy it and that way you got everything you need when you go to uh, put it in all right, let's get the panel open and take a peek in there. Okay, and there's the guts of the panel. You see we got our three three hot legs, line one, line two, line three, and then neutral here. So these are all neut neutral spaces. And then behind there, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's a bus that, that runs uh, behind and pops up under there. So these are gonna all be all neutrals too. So you got neutral connections here, neutral connections here. You just connect your neutral wire to that. And uh, like I say, I think I'm going to run the center leg as my generated phase. And these breakers, uh, the three uh, snap-ins you see are the what collect, connects the electrical. And that one on the left-hand side, that connects to this rail here. So it's, it's pretty much just a matter of uh, lining them up. And... Uh, Snapping them in. That's a that's a plug-in breaker right there. But it plugged into these three buses here. So you can see this bus is a line one. See it's dead ended over on this side. So this is a line one. That bus is over here. These funny looking ones here, that's a line two, that goes right up the middle. You can see this one dead ends over here, so that's line three, and that that bus runs over here up to that lug. So the busing's all concealed. It doesn't have exposed busing, which is kind of nice. It's down inside of this uh, plastic block. It's some kind of special, super tough plastic, but uh, uh, aluminum busing and plastic components. No copper, no phenolic. So these are, you can, these, this is an e economical uh, alternative for you. All right, so that's what, uh, that's what a snap-in breaker is all about. You are with snap-in breakers, you are limited to 100 amp. You wouldn't ever want to go beyond that with a plug-in breaker, um, just because those three snap-ins are subject to heat. And uh, at, if you exceed 100 amps off of a sub-panel like this, you should go with a bolt-in breaker. That's where the, they have lugs and uses 1030 screw, 1032 screws right down into the busing. And that's uh, the preferred method for your high amperage output units. 
All right, but that's our uh, that's our panel. Okay, and here's the dead front for it, uh, also known as a, a panel face. And uh, there's your, there's all your breaker slots there. And this will actually fit one. See, I ordered a main lug panel, but it you can also use a main breaker panel. So this would have a main breaker in here. I didn't need that because the panel is so close to where the fa the phase converter is and so close to the disconnect. So it didn't need any uh, any type of breaker there, but this is all my distribution here. And you can see 42 breaker slots. So that's 42 individual places to plug in a single pole. The three pole takes up three slots, all right? Uh, it's important to know the difference between flush mount and surface mount. Uh, when they say flush mount, the, the panel board could actually fit uh, inside of a wall. You build it into a drywall wall, and then this sits uh, flush with the drywall after you, after you build it out. So that is a flush mount, and a surface mount means the box gets mounted on the surface, and you order a different um, dead front for it for surface, uh, for surface mount. So it's important to know the difference between flush and surface. Flush me means just what it says. That when you're done with it, it's flush with the drywall. If you're out on the surface, surface means just like what it sounds like you're out on the surface. So you do have to order the uh, face separately. Both faces fit the same panel board. So uh, make sure you know that when you're ordering how you're going to mount your panel. Uh, this is a NEMA 1. So this is indoors, not waterproof um, uh, panel. All right, and uh, next up to unpack is a phase converter. That's a big one down underneath there, so uh, that's coming up next. Okay, here's the big dog here. This is a big 30 horse by American Rotary. And they gave me a single phase power indicator light as well as a starting light, which is, which is cool. And I'm gonna be remote starting this. They do give you a start stop station here, which I'm gonna leave enabled, but within the shop, I'm also gonna have another start stop uh, inside the shop. So this is a waterproof NEMA 3 uh, enclosure and it really is beautiful. They do a nice, they kind of, I mean I'm in the powder coating industry so this thing's a, this thing's a real work of art. It, it looks nice, the finish is nice, it's all put together with uh, stainless steel hardware. Very nice. You know I've given away a ton of these things on my channel. This is, this is the this is the first time I've gotten one for me that I get to keep. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and you know what? I've got an old, an old five horse. I got a, a lightly used five horse American Rotary. Still runs like a dream. And we're gonna give that away on the channel. So, uh, you know, as soon as I get this installed up and running and ready to go, I'm gonna uninstall my Little five horse rotary phase converter. It's 240 volt, five horsepower. Um, we're gonna give it away on the channel. So if you throw a comment, actually do this. Send me an email with a picture of what you what you intend to run with a five horsepower rotary phase converter. Tell me why you deserve it, and I'll pick a winner out of the emails. So um, it's not gonna be for another month or more until I get around to getting this put in my distribution and all I got a lot of work to do I'm just taking delivery on the equipment today and doing some planning of how all this is going to go um, if you send me an email tell me why you deserve it along with a photograph of the intended use and the intended machine that you're going to be uh, using that five horsepower rotary phase converter I'll ship it to you anywhere here in the United States if you're an international uh, shipping's on you if you're an international winner, but uh, we can have a little fun with this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give away my five horse. All right, and uh, sure thank the folks over at American Rotary for taking such good care of me. Uh, as far as the disconnect and the panel board and the breakers and the phase converter, basically they sent me a kit. You know, as long as you call and you know what you want, they can fix you up. Even even if you get down to transformers, let's say you got to buck the voltage. Let's say you got to boost the voltage. Uh, they've got transformers at their disposal, so they could they could do a transformer uh, setup. And you know, if you've got 240 volt single phase and you need 480 volt three phase, they can make it uh, with the right transformer and the right phase converter. You can do it. 
All right. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at my new phase converter and my panel board accessories. This is the planning stages of phase three. Uh, you know, that we, we kind of completed phase two with our roll-up door. But um, uh, let's go in. Last up, we're going to go inside. We're going to uh, look at the board and, uh, you know, see how this phase converter and panel board are going to work together and how we're going to do it with just one panel board. So let's go in there, draw some pictures, and we'll bring it to a close. Okay, I thought we'd come in and draw some lines on the board. We've got some components drawn. We're going to wire them together. Uh, I've got a 100 amp main breaker. It's all I have to work with. That's down at the main service of the house. And then I've got a 100 amp disconnect, two pole. So I got a 100 amp uh, two pole breaker. I got a 100 amp two pole disconnect switch. I've got a rotary phase converter, two in, three out. And then I have a three phase uh, load center. Uh, this disconnect is so you can safely service the, R the RPC. Uh, it's going to be in proximity to it, so it's going to be somewhere up here by the shop. I got an outdoor phase converter, so it'll be pad mounted out on a concrete slab. Then the load center goes inside the shop in here. Now what, I, what I'm doing is I'm pulling all my load centers out. I'm not going to even have a single phase load center or breaker panel or whatever you want to call it. I got a very large load center. It's got 42 breaker slots. It's a 225 amp rated, which it exceeds. You know, all I've got to work with is 100 amp, but I've exceeded that. Basically, when it comes to power service like this, uh, the easiest way to put it is there's plenty of food on, uh, on the table. We just don't have enough plates, uh, you know, to serve everyone. So a big load center with a lot of breaker spaces, you can distribute your power very easily. And uh, that's why we chose such a, such a big panel. A uh, 42 slot breaker panel is you know, way overkill for your average shop, but when you've got a lot of loads going a lot of different directions, and you know, if you're a one or two man show, you're not using all that, so your duty cycle is way down. Anyways, let's get it drawn up. We're gonna start with phase one, which is gonna be black. So we're gonna be black in, black out, black in, black out. And we're gonna bring this over to our load center, and down within the load center, we're gonna hit phase one and phase one inside the load center. So we've got the black wires, which is our native voltage. This is, uh, you know, it passes straight through. Now, I, when you order an RPC, you could, there's, there's two ways you can get them. One is passive, which means it'll pass the single phase through the converter without the converter running at all. Um, so this line is gonna pass straight through and heat up my load center on line one. Line two, actually let's, let's go to line three. That's going to be our second native voltage. Okay, so that's going to be there and that's going to be our third leg here. And that's going to come down to this breaker. I only showed two breakers. So what I'm representing here is a three, this is a three pole, three phase breaker, and this is a two pole uh, breaker, you know, so that's, that's still a single phase. So let's look at what happens here before we even start the RPC. We're passively sending the single phase all the way through the phase converter, all the way to the panel and line one and line three are already energized without the RPC running. So can we run this three pole breaker? No, we don't have the third leg. Can we run the two pole breaker? Yes. You know what we could even do? We could even run a little single pole breaker. Let's say that's on line three, that's on the blue leg. There's a single pole right there. Now what I didn't draw was a neutral that's gonna be coming through. You don't have to disconnect a neutral. So you don't, if you're running a neutral, you don't have to run it through a switch or a disconnect. Uh, we'll make a connection in the RPC and come over to our panel and then we'll have a neutral bar right inside where we can connect our neutrals. So now we've got neutral all the way through. Now I've got a single pole breaker here. I've got a neutral bar. I got some 120 volt. I can burn some lighting. I can do some, I can put some 110 volt outlets in. I can put, do all my low voltage work. So I've got my neutral. 
so I can run single pole, I can run two pole, but can I run three pole? Not yet. So do we have to do anything up there for line three? No. Anything here for line three? No. This is where our line, the, this is our generated phase. And we bring that over. I didn't leave myself enough room to power up line two. And then line two within the panel goes out to that breaker there. So now to run this breaker, we start the RPC. RPC is up and running. Now we've got three poles to this breaker and we're ready to run a, a true piece of three phase equipment. Um, this eliminates the need of having two load centers in your shop. A lot of guys put in one large single phase panel and one large three phase panel. I'm doing it all out of a three phase panel. Save space and uh, less equipment to buy. Um, it, it'll operate just normally without the RPC even running. So uh, when you do order your phase converter from American Rotary, make sure you ask, is it passive? Do you need it to be passive? Um, and then there's, there's others that are not passive. And I'll tell you a time when you shouldn't have a passive a phase converter. Let's say you've got a piece of standby equipment um, that has to run. And if you have a power outage, the phase converter goes down um, and, you know, or the phase converter you know, turns itself off and when it's, when it, when the power comes back up, um, uh, you want it, you want the phase converter to restart and you want it to supply all three legs to your equipment. Otherwise you take a risk of single phasing on a piece of equipment that needs three phase. If that RPC goes down during a power outage and it comes back up and there's no one there to push the start button on the RPC, uh, it's going to sit there and just, uh, get, you know, line one and line three, and it's not going to get your generated leg. So there's there's times where you where you don't want a passive, and there's times where you do want a passive. It matters. Make sure you ask the guys over at American Rotary when you order yours. Now we're going to keep the same color code throughout the shop. Line one black, line two red, line three blue. Whenever we see a red wire in anywhere in the shop coming out from the breakers, going out to a load. Uh, anytime you see a red wire in the shop, you're going to know it's a generated leg and uh, you know not to hook up to it if you want it to be hot all the time you know so essentially when we wire we can only use uh, two-thirds of this panel space uh, to put in breakers that we want to run without the RPC running and then we still got breaker space for three-phase equipment as required I only have a couple pieces of three-phase equipment right now but I wanted space to add more and 42 uh, individual breaker slots in that panel is going to give me that. All right, I hope this made sense, and I hope uh, that cleared up what we're doing. Um, but that's uh, all going to be part of Phase 3. Phase 2 is just get the door in and uh, take delivery on all this electrical equipment. All the stuff we're pulling out is uh, right over there in the corner. We'll zoom in on it right there. Uh, over my welders, those two gray boxes, are, that's all coming out right there by that fire extinguisher. All right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, phase two of my roll-up door and taking delivery on my phase converter. Thanks for watching.